narrative. I don't fit the narrative. I don't fit in the box that y'all want me to be in. I'm too hood. I'm too ghetto. Y'all told me that all year. But when other people do it, y'all don't say nothing. And this video has been brought to you by. Hear me clearly. America is not a racist country. We need to address. Well, first of all, no, I don't think America is a racist country. And racism. Racism is accepted wherever true Americans are. Perfect. Honestly, I have no idea. I was just trying to get to the handshake line and shake hands and, you know, be grateful that my team was in that position. Um, you know, that's all you can do is, you know, hold your head high, be proud of what you did and, you know, all the credit in the world to LSU. You know, they were tremendous. They, they deserve it. Um, they had a tremendous season. Kim Mulkey coached them so, so well. Um, you know, she's one of the best basketball coaches of all time, um, and it shows. And uh, she only said really kind things to me in the handshake line, so I'm very grateful for that, too. But um, honestly, I have no idea. And uh, I was just trying to, you know, spend the last few moments on the court with especially the five people that I've started 93 games with um, and relishing every second of that. I'm sure she was really proud of her accomplishment, and I would be really proud of my accomplishment if I made it, you know, won the national championship too. Um, it, you know, I mean, we are all different people, and we all have different ways to show our emotions, and, um, you know, I, again, I, I got to focus on what I can control. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, all year I was critiqued about who I was. Nobody, I don't, yeah, yeah, the narrative, I don't fit the narrative. I don't fit in the box that y'all want me to be in. I'm too hood, I'm too ghetto. Y'all told me that all year. But when other people do it, y'all don't say nothing. So this was for the girls that look like me, that gonna, that's gonna speak up on what they, they believe in. It's unapologetically you. And that's what I did it for tonight. This was for the more, it was, it was bigger than me tonight. It was bigger than me. Twitter is going to go in a rage every time. And I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I feel like I've grown, helped grow women's basketball this year. I'm super happy and excited. So I'm looking forward to celebrating in the next season. So before we actually get directly into this uh, whole thing, I want to just have people understand where it is that the You Can't See Me specifically uh, came from, who originally directly started it from, and where it is that the other young woman, the more alabaster of the two American sweetheart, directly got it from, and where that person originally got it from. So I'm going to let John Cena take it away. My younger brother, Sean, was always our litmus test. Uh, he kind of liked the same music and he would never go to the studio with us. So we'd come home with our tracks and we'd play it for him. And he was ruthless, man. He wouldn't, he would never be satisfied with any song. And he heard the time is now and just did this dance that Tony Yeo did in one of the G unit videos. It was like, he put his hand over his head and just kind of like, bobbed his head like that. Oh yeah, I kind of remember that. And yeah, I was yeah. like, man, what are you doing? That looked like just ridiculous. He's like, no, no, man, this is Tony Daniel Dance is doing this thing. And I'm like, I'll do it on TV. And he's like, I dare you to do it on TV. <laughs> Little did he know I'll do this on TV. <laughs> so, <laughs> 85 songs, keep in mind, they're only like 16 on the You Can't See Me album. And I remember hearing this one beat and it was the beat for My Time Is Now. But no, no build up to the crescendo and the horns and the brass and the heavy hit of the bass, like it had everything. And we would always use my little brother as kind of our litmus test because he was a really harsh critic. And if he enjoyed it, I knew we were okay. And I remember him just going like this and like 
getting lost in it. And I think he was doing what was, I think, the Tony Yeo dance at the time, where Tony Yeo would put his hand in front of his face and shake his head. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? And it was ridiculous. And he's like, I'm doing the Yeo dance. I'm like, okay, I'll do that on TV to pay homage to you liking the beat, because I'm gonna go with this for the song. And he dared me. And on the dare, I was like, yo, I'm definitely doing it. So instead of doing the Yayo dance, I kind of did the reverse because I figured it would be more visible to, to show my brother on TV, like, hey, I'm doing the thing that you dared me to do. You Can't See Me is kind of a way to talk smack in hip hop culture of like, you're not on my level. So I kind of put the two and two together, just really trying to make one person in West Newbury, Massachusetts laugh. So again, we're dealing with America. We're dealing with the exact same thing that people say does not exist in America, meaning that people are coming from two different worlds, two different types of understandings, living experiences, uh, the way that they walk, the way that they grow up, a perception of which that they come to understand how it is that others perceive them, right? You heard the first young lady basically state that, hey, you know, um, I didn't even know what was going on. Uh, you know, I was just trying to, you know, get my handshakes out. Uh, ended up talking to the coach. Uh, you know, she's one of the best, you know, that has done it. She's one of the best here. Um, you know, respect to the team, respect to everybody and yada, yada, yada. You know, the normal, uh, you know, type of thing that you would hear. Right. And this is when, of course, the main ones uh, on Twitter is like, yeah, she's so classy. And, you know, this, this, that and the third. And, you know, we really have to stand up for her and all of these other things. Matter of fact, speaking of standing up, something that I found completely weird. Now, find a new writer. First Lady Jill Biden stated Monday that she wants defeated Iowa women's basketball team to be invited to the White House in addition to the national title winners, Louisiana University. Biden is speaking at Colorado State Capitol in Denver, who also praised Iowa's sportsmanship and congratulated both teams on their performance. Quote, I know we'll have the champions come to the White House. We always do. So we hope LSU will come. But, you know, I'm going to tell Joe, I think Iowa should come too because they played such a good game. The White House didn't immediately respond to a request for comment about whether President Joe Biden would also extend a White House invitation to Iowa and whether it would be a joint visit with LSU or a separate engagement. I need somebody to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm maybe I'm missing something. Um, I can't really, you know, put my finger on it. But when is the last time in sports history that the winners got an invitation to the White House and the losers got an invitation to the White House? I could have sworn only people that won the Super Bowl. Only people that won the NBA championship during the year, they were the only ones that made it directly to the White House. I did not hear of second place making it to the White House, right? And we're talking about sports. We're talking about the men that play, that do this, right? So why is it that it's even a thought theory or a consideration that when it comes to women's sports that, hey, we need to celebrate both because both did a great job. Huh? Huh? What, what? What? Where am I at right now? Are we in the twilight zone at this moment in time? Are you serious? Is this one of those times that basically if one person wins, they don't want everybody else to feel like losers? So now we got to give everybody cupcakes and fake sick uh, uh, first place trophies? Is, is that what we're doing? Everybody's winners. Yay! No. No, you lost. You lost. You lost. Come back again next year. Try again. Try again. It is A-OK. -okay. You, you, you played at the best that you could possibly do. But, hey, you just weren't there. It is what it is. Why is this even a thing? Why is this even a thing? Like I said, for me, to my recollection, I've never seen anything like this before in my life when I dealt with sports. Never. So why is it that now this is something that is now going to happen? Is it because the other girl is America's sweetheart? And yet again, those girls are reflective of 
the majority in the United States. So they want to sit up there and, and make sure to give their champion, you know, some type of hurrah, congratulations. And like, that's crazy. That's a thousand percent crazy. Stuff like this is reserved for champions. It's reserved for winners. It's not reserved for second place. Nobody cares about second place. When it comes to NBA, nobody cares about second place. When it comes to cyclists in the Olympics or whatever, nobody cares about second place. No, Nobody cares. When, it, Like, yo, like how many times do I got to say this? Like, this is ridiculous. Anytime you got some black college age students that are successful that's doing their thing somehow some way they got to just find a way to just put it on mute they got to dim that shine a little bit they got to make sure that they share that which is crazy why is it that these young women have to share their success with other women that they beat on an equal playing field that's unfair because let this have been reversed this would have never been considered. It would never be a theory. It wouldn't even be an article. But yet, here we are. All right, so back to the normal story, right? You're again dealing with two women from two different sides of the track, both a part of America, both a part of the fabric, but they're each getting a different taste of what it is to be a victim or what it is to be a champion or what it is to be considered great, right? You can clearly see that America's sweetheart that you can see directly on the screen, she's the one that's getting all the empathy and the sympathy and people are just shedding tears and crying all over America directly for her. They feel like she was cheated. They feel like she's realistically the best. And, you know, the, the game is rigged. They feel like, you know, the jig is up. They, they, they feel like, you know, somebody really did something in order to steal this show. They feel that the young black woman does not need the championship. They, they feel that she doesn't deserve it. They feel that she is classless. And they feel that America's sweetheart just has so much class. You can just see some of the comments directly below, right? Guess who overshadowed Reese? 10 Angel in the title game. Caitlin Clark, 22 dead. Absolutely classless move by Reese. Another person said, I like how she is showboating and wasn't even the best player on her own team today. We couldn't see you behind Jasmine Carson. If it wasn't for her, you wouldn't have that ring. You know, the funniest thing about that is everything is a team sport. Everything comes down directly to the team. So regardless of how the fragile ones out here, how the Snow Walkers directly feel about how it is that Snow White and her seven dwarves lost this uh, battle, it is directly what it is. Take the loss, be humbled, and try again next year. Again, a lot of the people that are actually even comments are not even fans of the WNBA. <laughs> they don't even really watch women's sports. They can't even name you their favorite top 10 uh, female basketball players, both college or WNBA, just to, to give a broad expansion. Because if you lock people down to one, they're going to they're going to fry a brain circuit. Right. So, you know, like I said, it's it's complete comedy when I look uh, directly in the comment section, complete comedy. And I know it to be true. Because I myself, I might not watch a lot of women's sports, but the main thing that I do just so happen to watch is boxing, UFC. I'm there. Boxing and UFC. There's actually quite a few women that I'm actually following <laughs> on Twitter. Um, and they are fighters. Let me let me tell you. Clarissa Shields, the quote, the one herself, um, is one of those women. The greatest uh, woman to ever do it. Right. But um, like I said before, it's it's amazing to me how you have individuals that feel a certain type of way. And this is what it is that they want to do. This is how it is that they want to talk. Right. And you heard the, the, the young woman. I made sure to have it directly in a video twice. She specifically called out and told the media. She was like, yo, all 
since I've been playing, y'all said that I was too hood. Y'all said that I was ghetto. This is what you branded me. These are the titles that you gave me, right? So instead of wanting to to call her a champion, a victor, right? And or instead of calling her the best, they wanted to downgrade and dim her light any which way they wanted to do it. But now they got to eat that because guess what? Their job is to write articles. So just like how they wrote those articles and said those things about her being too hood and her being too ghetto, now they got to sit up there and say that she's a champion. Now they got to sit up there and show those pictures where she's holding that trophy. All of that culminated into this moment so she could tell everybody who didn't believe in her to shut up. Now you got to sit up there, even though you don't want to, and it burns you to sit up there and say, now you got to admit who's the best. Now you have to say who's the best because you can't, you can't go to second best. Because second best ain't all over the boards. Second best ain't cutting down the net. Second best ain't getting that ring and holding that trophy. Second best ain't going to the White House. Second best ain't celebrating with their team and their coach. Like I said before, you know, it's it's hilarious and it's funny seeing this played out. And again, for a lot of people who feel that racism, discrimination, and bigotry does not exist in America, I implore you to go look at social media when it deals with the context of these two women and see how split it's literally black white how split this whole conversation is and who is picking and who is choosing the side that they're on like i said people think it's a game out here but this is showing you what the real game is Things like this will directly show you exactly who people are and what it is that they are about and what they believe in. And America is clear cut showing you their face at this moment in time. So if anybody wants to magically forget this in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, two days, a week, a month or a year from now, I'm going to be right here. Don't matter if it's this platform, or the next platform or 10 platforms after this. I'm going to be right here to remind you and to let you know this is how y'all was acting. This is what y'all like to do when it is that when you have your great white hope and you put all of your faith, you, you put all of your belief, you, you, you put everything that you cherish directly into that and it falls short. You got to eat that. You, 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 you got to take that. You got to walk with that L. That's a big L. House of L's that you now have to hold on to. You got to caress that L. You got to love that L. You got to be with that L. You got to sleep next to that L. When you wake up in the morning for breakfast, that L is going to be right there. When you go into the afternoon and take a shower, which you probably won't because you don't take showers, you got to sit up there and see that L next to the soap that you barely use. Right? When you go to work, you got to see that L. When you do banking, you got to see that L. When, when you go to the grocery store, you're looking at the magazine section of the newspapers. Guess what? <laughs> you got to see that L. But like I said before, you know, a lot of people will believe what it is that they want to believe. And only so few people will actually stand up for this young black woman and her team. And only so few will actually speak out and use the platforms that they have in order to showcase the bigotry the racism and the discri uh, discrimination that America holds so dear that is woven into the DNA and the fabric that people say doesn't exist because quote unquote we're all Americans but yet everybody that's an American is not looking at this black woman as a champion and respecting her as such.